Andor episode 10 just took Star Wars to new heights, especially the character of Luthan. I mean, this guy is the worst of the worst and the best of the best at the same time. And it's kind of crazy to see how Star Wars has evolved throughout the years, especially with this series that is as professional as I've seen up until now. And episode 9 left us with a lot of questions. Foremost, how will Cassian escape this horrible Narkina 5 prison? This comes after they learn that somebody from the leadership made a mistake and sent a guy that was supposed to be released back into level 2. After everybody realizing this mistake, the guards fried killed everybody on that level just to keep quiet. And now that everybody else has found out, nobody is gonna get out alive. In fact, the episode itself starts with that premise that that was left in episode 9, Kino and Cassian more specifically. It is Kino that is not yet fully convinced of Cassian's plan to escape, and we briefly see that going on as Cassian is trying to convince. In fact, there is a scuffle as well between the two as Cassian is desperately trying to convince Kino to get to his side. But once they make it to their cell, Kino takes it upon himself to inform everybody that no one is getting out of here alive. The sabotage plan by Perdigas and Deidre takes place, but now we see the unfolding of Lonnie more and more. This episode shows that Deidre is starting to be threatened by Lonnie as Petrigas does come to agreement with him more so than Deidre. As fun as it was to see the Imperial side, I think this episode mostly focused completely on the escape of the prisoners. How the day started as normal as any other day, miserable, but in a short amount of time, it devolved into madness. We saw also in Ferrix things are not looking good, as well as for Mon Mothma, who finally meets this Davos guy and is not pleased as he, in exchange for the services rendered to Mon Mothma through his banking system, he doesn't want a fee, but instead wants to bring his son into the fold and ultimately get to a premarital agreement between his son and Mon Mothma's daughter, an old Shendrillan custom, something that Mon Mothma is utterly against. The plan was simple and perfect, they only needed luck to escape. With the death of Olaf, Cassian knew that immediately the next morning they will replace him, and once the exchange starts happening, this is when they should strike. Who knows when they will have another chance. Cassian makes sure to overflow the chambers with water, and midway as they're coming down with a new prisoner, all the prisoners start the revolt. Cassian begins by interrupting the left midway, then they start throwing materials at the guards, and this is a mark of a great show, because once you see these guards getting a taste of their own medicine, getting electrocuted and getting shot just as they were doing it to the prisoners, when it feels feels so satisfying, this is when you know this works. The show has built up to this moment. It's not a cheap trick, it's actually very earned. You feel the intensity and the pain of all these prisoners, especially Kino and Cassian, who go for it full throttle. Once they escape their level, now they go for the main area, in which they shut down everything completely, even the electrocuted floors, posing no danger now to the prisoners that are on other levels as well as on their cells, Kino himself makes the announcement that we shall be free either today or never. This is when the Great Revolt starts. 5,000 prisoners go up against only a handful of guards who are overwhelmed by all these guys that have finally got a grasp on the entire facility. Even Kino has an edge. He kills a guard for disobeying him. And we see that moment when everybody is on the same mindset, when it clicks, when the prisoners realize that they are running the asylum now. Again, the worth it moment, the moment when you realize that this is the payoff, is when Cassian Andor first makes it to the prison. Remember the other prisoner who said, breathe the, this fresh air because who knows when we'll be able to be outside again? This is a moment earned because we feel the freedom that these prisoners who have been locked up 
up here for years finally feel for the first time after so long. What's sad, of course, is that in the end, we don't know the fate of Kino because as most of the prisoners are jumping on the ocean on the sea outside, Kino says to Cassian that he does not know how to swim. And at that moment, most of the prisoners who are jumping actually push Cassian who falls down to the water and leaves Kino on the docking station. Basically, us as an audience, and I would love it if they never answer this question, as episode 10 wraps up, we have no idea if Kino survived this escape or not. Same as Cassian Andor, he has no idea what happened with Kino afterward. But one of the most epic shots follows. As the prisoners are escaping, we get an overhead shot of way above, and we see that the prison complex is actually an imperial logo, symbolizing that the Empire is essentially a prison. Every citizen that lives under the imperial rule is a prisoner in it of itself, and all they live for with a smidge of hope that one day life will be better. In the end, the speculation online was actually confirmed to be correct, although not as the fans really wanted. Again, we've been accustomed to seeing these cliches in Star Wars where there's a bad guy who turns out to be a good guy and stuff like that. Lonnie, as everybody with the Andor series, Lonnie as well just works for his self-interest. We actually realize that Luthen is a complete sociopath. Achieving victory, he will do whatever it is necessary. This is the price he pays to fight against this cruel and evil empire. We realize that Luthen has been threatening Lonnie, his family, for years now. He has been working inside the ISB, informing Lonnie of their own misgivings so that he could be promoted through the ranks by knowing information nobody else knows, as well as vice versa, Lonnie informing Luthen of the uh, of the Imperials' operations. Ultimately, though, the tragic figure here is Lonnie, because he is trapped between an empire that is consuming him daily and a freedom fighter movement represented by Luthen, who has him tangled in a web of lies and won't let him go. Essentially, he is trapped between these both warring sides. But I think episode 10 ultimately removed the mask from Luthen completely. We do realize the sad nature of Luthen's existence. Ever since the Empire existed, he has been living a miserable life, as he admits so himself. Without a family, without a life, without a happy life, all he does is being consumed by the Empire and how he would destroy it. But the trail of fire that he leaves behind, we now realize the extent of it. Luthen goes to the extent of sacrificing one of his partners in Krieger and his 50 men, only to reassure that the ISB won't be suspicious that there's a leak amongst them. This is how far Luthen has gone. He is sacrificing Lonnie, his family, Krieger, his men, and himself just in order to achieve victory, and you realize the sheer madness of it all. The episode ultimately ends with Cassian escaping on foot on land together with Ruscott Melchi, who we see in Rogue One as well. It's going to be interesting to see these last two episodes and how everything comes together. But guys, let me know what do you think down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies, and have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.